Good afternoon. So before I share my vision of the future mobility and uh, the way we want to reach it, let me have a quick look past uh, in the past. Uh, to be exact, in the year 1888. 1, in this year, Bertha Benz, the wife of the inventor of the automobile, Carl Benz, took the car of her husband, he didn't know that, and just drove to her mother. 100 kilometers from Mannheim to Pforzheim. So why did she do that? She wanted to prove that the technology her husband has invented is ready to be used and is ready to be sold for customers. So she was a very courageous woman, because that time that was not an easy journey from Mannheim to Pforzheim. There were no roads we have today, and there were also no fuel stations. But she reached their destination in the evening of that day, and she reached her goal. She, uh, she, uh, she proved that the technology was ready, and she proved that you can trust on the new automotive technology. That was the start of the success of automobiles. So, 125 years ago, the inventors of the automobile had a totally different vision we have from the cars. So they just wanted to replace mules or horses by a mechanical engine. Since these days, the technology has changed a lot. And now we are thinking about cars which are real automobiles that can drive without a driver. So, in principle, we hope that we have in a few years cars where you just can sit down in and uh, the car drives you comfortable to wherever you want without the need of a driver. In the last year, 125 years after the drive of Bertha Benz from Mannheim to Pforzheim, we wanted again to prove the feasibility of the new technology. We used a standard S-Class car, which looks pretty much the same as a series car you can buy, but we equipped this with a lot of technology. So we inserted a few more sensors in the car, we relayed on uh, modern GPS technologies, we relayed on modern mapping technologies. And then we wanted to know, can we go with such a car without a driver inside the, the 100 kilometers from Mannheim to Pforzheim again? We of, of course also wanted to find out what we have to do further on to make this technology really uh, useful for normal customers. So let me show you a few impressions of the, of the drive from Mannheim to Pforzheim. So we started in a, in a big city in, in Germany with a few hundred thousand inhabitants. We have to pass other big cities like Heidelberg, but we also had to pass some small villages with very small roads, with sm very narrow roads. So the car, of course, knows use all traffic rules. So we stopped at red lights, we started again when the uh, traffic light gets uh, green again. If you have a look on the car, from the outside it looks nearly like a human will drive it. Maybe we are driving a little bit more cautious than, than humans will do. Sometimes it seems like a, a beginner of driving sits in the car. So the uh, driver inside the car is not really a driver, so we, we always kept a man, a human inside the car, just in case if technology fails. But as you see, he doesn't have to intervene. So just the car drove by itself, he was just an assistant driver. We also passed uh, rural roads where we can drive about 100 kilometers an hour, we had to pass roundabouts, we had to pass uh, parked cars and uh, pass them in a safe distance. And as you see, the driver has nothing to do. These situations are all relatively easy. Now the next, next few examples are something which shows us also the limitation of, of the new technology. So we still can keep the road, we still can go through narrow gates as shown here, and we also knew the rules that pedestrians at a crosswalk may cross the street. So if you find a pedestrian standing at a crosswalk, we just wait and, until he crosses the street. In this case, shown here, it works really good. So the old lady you will see uh, soon. The car stops, the lady crosses the road, and we start again. 
in case the lady has waved a little bit earlier and had, would have let us passing, we just have waited and waited and waited and waited. Because we are very polite and that uh, passengers pass. The last situation here also shows a difficult uh, situation for an autonomous car. Here we had to share the road with oncoming traffic. Then we have, in principle, negotiate with other human drivers who is allowed to drive first. And again, we are too polite in some cases, and if we don't find a driver who is also polite, we just stand still and wait and wait and wait. So, as you see, the technology is nearly uh, ready to be used, but we are not able at the moment to communicate with humans on the same level. At the end of the day, after about two and a half hour drive, we reached Pforzheim successfully without any incidents. So why are we looking as a car manufacturer on automated cars? So of course, our main target is to sell private-owned cars. And here we want to make our customers feel more comfortable and safer inside their cars. We also want to guarantee individual mobility for anyone. And our, our uh, vision is that a customer can use his car as an extension of his home. He can use it as a mobile home. He can use it as an office. He can use it to relax. He can care about his family without thinking about accidents. And we also think that in the future, handicapped or old people will be able to drive in their own car. When we are able to drive on highways, of course, the next step would be to think about driving without a driver at all in the car. And the vision here would be that, that we have the chance just to call the car from anywhere we want. The car comes to us without the driver. We then use the car to drive wherever we want to. And at the end, we just leave the car at the sidewalk and the car finds its way back to the parking lot. In that case, you can choose the car you ever want. So you can use a small one for cities, you can use a luxury one for, for going to the opera, or you can use a huge one if you want to travel with your family. Last but not least, automated cars also are very, very useful if you think about uh, drugs and delivering goods. So in that case, we think that automated drugs would allow uh, automated loading and unloading of, of uh, goods on drugs. That means you don't have injuries of workers doing this at the moment. We also think that you can use automated trucks to deliver goods long distances on highways and during the, the driving time the driver can relax. And of course you also could use small vans to deliver the goods to the end customer. The future here is also not very far away, so at least on highways we think that, that this future will be a reality very soon. As you see here, we have a demonstration truck on a highway already, which looks from the outside like a normal truck. But if you have a look in, inside the truck, you see the driver doesn't have to steer, he just can do whatever he wants. So he can use an a iPad or whatever, the truck cares about driving, the truck cares about safety, and even let the emergency vehicles pass. In such a truck, the driver even could do old-fashioned things, like doing paperwork, which he normally wouldn't do, I think, in the future. But we think the driver still has to be inside the truck, because in the next year, we think we will not be able to realize autonomous truck traffic outside highways, so therefore he has to take over control when he leaves the autobahn again. But in that case, he is relaxed and can do his job much better than before. So, having shown you these examples, I of course have to answer the questions, are fully automated or driverless vehicles already on public roads? But to be honest, I still have to say, no, they are not. So all series vehicles we have on the road are so-called partially automated. That means the driver always is responsible at the end of the day for driving and for faults of the car and for his driving style. So he's still responsible. And even all test vehicles I have shown you, as you have seen, we always have a human being inside the cabin or inside the car, and he acts as a safety driver. 
So in case the technology fails, he can override the decisions of the automated systems and he even can switch off the system by an emergency button. So why do, don't we have uh, driverless cars on the road so far? So there are some remaining challenges and I want to discuss this now. First of all, if we want to introduce highly automated systems without a driver inside, we have to make sure that the technology is as good as a human driver in any cases. What Bertha Benz proved 125 years ago, we have to prove again, but now for the technology. And uh, that seems to be easy to avoid accidents on, on highways, but even then, there are some critical situations you can imagine. So if there is a car in front of you, there is an obstacle on the road, the driver in front of you does recognize that very late, then you have to make sure your technical systems, your sensor, see the obstacles and the car is uh, stopped safely. If you go away from the autobahn, if you go into inner cities, that gets even harder. So here we have to take care about pedestrians, even about pedestrians who don't care about traffic rules. So maybe a small children just walk on the road and we have to make sure that we don't hurt them. So this situation is shown here. Again, the car has to avoid the accident and we have to guarantee this. This is really challenging, especially if we think that we have to do this under all weather conditions, under all road conditions and under all traffic conditions. In the last years, I mentioned that before, we had uh, done a good job, I would say, avoiding accidents. And today, uh, the combination of a human driver and of the accident avoidance systems we have installed in the car had reduced the accident rate in the last years dramatically. So, for example, in Germany, on a German autobahn, you will find a severe accident only every seven and a half million kilometers. So the combination of the human driver and the current technologies avoid accidents nearly the whole time. That means they do the job normally very right and not wrong. What we now have to prove is that the technology alone without the driver also does the job as good as the human. So we have to prove that we don't do any single failure with, within every seven and a half million kilometers. And that's hard to, to do. Therefore, we say we have to go on step by step. So we carefully look where we think we can trust on technology, in which traffic environment we can use the new technologies. So on the left-hand side, you see a, a highway there it seems to be easy because all cars drive in the same direction. In an Asian city like here in Japan, it seems to be really complicated because you have a chaotic traffic situation. Also, we think we first start with easy weather conditions. So if you have a good visibility for the humans as well as for the camera systems, we think we can go on. In very bad weather conditions, it makes to be too, uh, too complicated. And also, if we have slippery roads, we think it's better first to rely on the driver than on the car alone. So our idea is to go step by step forward. So we will clearly define under which conditions we can trust on our technology, under which traffic conditions, under which weather conditions and under which road conditions. And then we define under which of these conditions we can allow an automated system to drive the car without the help of the driver. So we decide on which road he can do that and we also decide which speed we will drive. So at the first step, we wouldn't uh, introduce systems which drive 200 kilometers on a highway per hour. So doing this, we think we can improve the risk balance, so we just uh, introduce one automation scenario at a time, adjust the conditions for that. Thereby, we have to make sure that we avoid old risks, which people do and which are so old faults people are doing and cars are doing. And of course, if we introduce new technologies, we always have a risk to introduce new faults. So we have to prove first, before we bring the cars to the customer, that the new faults are much smaller than the, reduce, the reduction of the old faults. So that at the end of the day, the individual and the society as a whole gains uh, a lot. 
At the same time, we also gain experience in introducing automation system and know then what we can do in the next step. So thanks for your attention.